John 3.36 says the wrath of God is on all who believe not. Is this correct? Uh, he that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life, and he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. Yes, it is true. The wrath of God abides on anyone that doesn't believe the Son. Uh, now, I know some people might say, well, this is before the cross and God's wrath was put on Jesus. That's true. But if you don't receive that, it's on you. You're, you're only reconciled to God by Jesus. So if you're not reconciled, the wrath of God abides on you. I do believe that. Yes. But God loves the world. He wants them saved. Doesn't mean he doesn't love you. He, he died for every person. Okay, thanks. Brother Ben? Uh, well, okay. So, the, yes, the wrath of God does abide on all who believe. Now, the important thing is, um, once you believe, the wrath of God no longer abides on you. You're, you're eternally out of the sphere or the realm of God's wrath. And even if you later stop believing, that's a, a permanent... Uh, um transition or uh at a, a permanent uh, position so um yeah as unbelievers in fact we we're just talking about romans i think that's exactly what romans uh one i love romans because it's like the most scientific explanation of the gospel if you want to know the nitty and gritty of of what how you how people are judged and what it takes to be saved and understand it uh, i i just love romans i know a lot of people don't but i i love it because it's very. Uh, it's a scientific statement of salvation, essentially, and it basically teaches again that before you're saved, uh, the wrath of God abides on people, and the the wrath of God, the law brings about wrath, and the Romans is teaching basically that whether you're a Jew with the law or you're uh, a Gentile without the law, you'll be, that even your own conscience condemns you. Because you've become a law to your a law unto yourself. So even the Gentiles who do not have the law of Moses, they uh, d they defy their own conscience and their own uh, God given conscience of what's right and wrong. So they even themselves can't keep the law that they they even if even if it's an imperfect law, they can't even keep their own uh, their own uh, self imposed law. <laughs> They're hypocrites. Um, and so, again, you're, you're a hypocrite whether you're under the law of Moses because you can't keep it. And you're a hypocrite if you are just are, you know, people say, I have my own law or I follow the golden rule. Well, guess what? You do it imperfectly. You're a hypocrite. And you're a lawbreaker. And it declares you unrighteous. That's what the law does. It identifies sin and unrighteousness. That's what its purpose is. And um, because, again, a, per a righteous person doesn't need the law and they're not under the law. Because, again, they're righteous. They're never going to do anything wrong. That's why Christ, uh, that's why we need to be born again. Um, so, yes, the wrath of God abides on all who believe not. But the moment you believe, God forever sees you as a believer. It's like a title that you hold. Uh, before you're a believer, you're like you're considered a, a, you know, a, child, a child of wrath and a cursed children, uh, a cursed child of... Uh, Sons of disobedience. The Bible has a number of terms it uses for unbelievers. But once you believe, you, you're you you're ever forever seen by God. The moment you believe on Christ alone, in faith alone, in Christ alone, in His person and work, you're forever seen by God as a believer. Even if you later stop believing, uh, not again, I'm not suggesting you do that at all. God forbid you ever stop believing. I don't recommend that. I'm just saying. Uh, I'm just trying to illustrate a, a principle here, uh, and that's what exactly what Romans teaches. That you're 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 considered an overcomer. You're considered a saint. You're a believer, um, and so again, that's a one time. Your one time belief, faith in Christ is your eternal obedience in God's sight. Your eternal righteousness. You're declared righteous forever, um, and again, but until you believe, uh, the wrath of God abides on you, and you will be condemned, and you will. Uh, suffer God's wrath, I, and the Romans also teaches, by the way, that God's wrath is not just an, just uh, something experienced in uh, after you die. It's uh, re, it's the wrath of God is re, the revealed from heaven, and it goes in to explain uh, the, uh, the 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 wrath of God. The, you know, it basically Romans says the righteousness of God is revealed in the gospel, but is wrath is revealed 
from heaven against all ungodliness right here and now. So when you see the things that Romans talks about, about people, uh, about different sexual, sexual sins or even being disobedient to parents, uh, all that rebellion is a, 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 a manifestations of God's wrath because people rejected him, rejected, uh, uh, they didn't want to retain his knowledge and his right way because they rejected it. God gave them up to uh, basically to have, you know, ha have their way. He wants to show them. And even then, his wrath in that respect, I think, in this life is an act of mercy because it shows them, shows the world that the folly of their decision, the folly of rejecting truth and, and, and who's the truth is God. So, um, it, 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 the benefit, God's wrath in this life is to show us the folly of, of rejecting him and, uh, is to get us to, you know, turn to him and, and to be saved. All right, thank you. Well, I, I certainly am not going to argue or object to the answers that uh, you both gave, uh, even though I d don't agree. I, I see it differently. I'm sure you're probably aware of it. Maybe I'm sure Renee is aware of it because she kind of <laughs> stated my position. Um, I, I do think that uh, that because that was before the cross and, and after the cross, something wonderful happened. Um, and that is that uh, I, I think we do have, a uh, matter of fact, I made a video titled Universal Reconciliation, but not Universal Salvation. Uh, so, um, the, and I, I, other videos that talk about these two problems of, of man, the, the, the sin problem and the death problem. Um, sometimes people kind of lump this together and don't make this differentiation. But uh, I think that uh, man is born with these two problems. Uh, except now, after the cross, man is no longer born with the sin problem in terms of there is no barrier between man and God preventing man from having a relationship with God. Jesus paid for the sins there. And if Jesus paid for the sins, it, would, it doesn't make sense to me that God's going to be punishing people for sins that he paid for. I believe he paid for everybody's sins. Now, people make a distinction saying, yeah, he paid for the sins, but it doesn't apply to you until you believe that's okay. I don't want to uh, make an issue of it, but I, I do think it applies to everybody. So there is one other issue that, that remains for all of humanity. Even though uh, our sins are paid for, uh, we still have the death problem. And that is that we are mortal. We do not have eternal life. So Jesus paid for our sins. What a shame it would be if we die and go to the judgment and, and uh, Jesus says, look, uh, sin was preventing you from having a relationship with me and, and coming to heaven, but I paid for your sins, so you have access. However, you refuse to receive the gift of eternal life, so you're going to die. And then they die, and they uh, go to the uh, suffer the second death in the lake of fire, where they're destroyed. That's how I see it, uh, um, but again, um, I'm probably the only one uh, here at CES that sees it that way. So, but you know, uh, I've said this many times that the majority viewpoint uh, is probably right. And that's why I'm not gonna leave the majority or tradition or orthodoxy uh, very quickly. But obviously the best example I can give you of the majority being wrong is that the majority of Christendom does not believe the gospel. They believe in faith plus works. So it's possible for the, the majority to and get things horribly wrong. Uh, Okay, I guess I covered that. So uh, we have enough time now that we can squeeze in the gospel and, and encouragement. Um, did you guys want to say anything more uh, after my my comment? Well, I, I would say that, again, there's, there's uh, uh, verses in the Bible uh, that talk about God's wrath and, 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 uh, and his just condemnation. So if they pay for sins, then how could anyone be justly condemned? There would be no law to justly condemn them for. And it talks about in Revelation, for example, that you know, people who take the mark of the beast are going to experience, uh, you know, the full, full uh, cup of his wrath, and and again, the law brings about wrath. So, um, I think if we're systematic about it and just understanding God's justice, uh, I don't, I don't see how it could be any other way. But I, I'm okay with your view. Well, I, uh, I gave you a thumbnail answer, uh, but for more on this, I'm not. This is not a unique idea that I just came up with. I'm not claiming that the Spirit spoke to me and revealed this new truth for me. No, this is not a new idea and, and if you go to Aaron Budgen's channel watch his videos you'll see that he 
presents this very well uh, that there are two problems uh, and, and that the sin problem and the death problem are two distinct problems the way I just expressed it. Also, Malcolm Smith uh, would, teach his, would teach the same thing on it. So it's not some harebrained idea that I, I just thought of. So, uh, But as I said, this is not something we have to agree upon. Right. I, I want to say uh, I would have to I, I totally understand that position. However, because Paul says that the wrath of God is coming uh, upon the children of disobedience for these things, the things that they, you know, that the unsaved do and that those that don't believe on Christ our children are disobedience and his wrath is still coming. And this is after the death of Christ. So I think their actual death sentence when they perish in the lake of fire is God's wrath because they were never reconciled to God through Jesus by faith. That That's just my opinion, but I completely understand the position you're making and it's a valid one. 